OpenAI just secretly launched the Assistant's new streaming text feature and it's a game changer in the world of chatbot and AI interaction. As you know, the streaming capabilities were in development for a while and it was a much weighted feature that a lot of developers were looking forward to. As soon as I found out about the, the new streaming capabilities, it just came out secretly while I was testing the Assistant on the OpenAI platform. He said it's still in beta mode, so give it a try. There has been some challenges while I was going through it, so before you start deploying it into a web or a chat application, I have to warn you, there is some caveats that you need to know. So make sure you watch the video uh, to see exactly how I am using it in my application. If you find a better solution, definitely reach out and let me know. When you go over to the OpenAI website and look into the Assistant API Quick Start Guide, you'll notice that there is a new section at the bottom uh, where step four, when creating a run, you uh, can now create a run with streaming and without streaming. So the without streaming would be the run as before. With the streaming feature, it gives you a few additional capabilities as well as well as some new functions, which includes the assistant event handler. I'm gonna quickly run the code in Google Collaboratory and show you how it works. Uh, Google Collaboratory is essentially an online uh, space where you can run Python code in the cloud using Jupyter Notebooks. It's easy and fast to deploy, so pretty, pretty good for rapid testing. First off, make sure you update or install the latest version of the OpenAI, which is the version 1.14. Also, I'll provide a link to this notebook in my resources for free. If you do choose to use it, make sure you replace it with your OpenAI API key. If you're using Assistant for a while, then you probably know the Assistant framework. The Assistant is essentially the OpenAI's Assistant. Then you have the thread, which is a conversation session between the Assistant and the user. When user asks a query to the Assistant, it basically appends that message to that thread and then it invokes the run function, which essentially determines whether to retrieve the knowledge base, a call to certain tools, a run the code interpreter, anything of that sort. And then it returns the assistance response message. With the new streaming capabilities enabled, you can run the create and run function under the threads. And then you will see a list of events getting populated as the run progresses. And it is essentially under the thread.message delta event where chunks of the text will be populated as they arrive. OpenAI also has another function, the assistant event handler, which wraps all the message delta or chunks into streaming text. But if you're building web applications or chatbots on your own, without a WebSocket for streaming applications, then you would have to create or handle this uh, in a manual way. And I'm gonna show this uh, later on with the Streamlit application. Okay, let's go back to our Google Collaboratory Notebook. First off, let's create the assistant. As specified, we are going to create a math tutor with the GPT-4 model and a code interpreter. Then we're gonna create a thread and then we're gonna append a message to that thread. I need to solve this equation. Google Collaboratory and Jupyter Notebook in general supports streaming interface. So we're going to use the OpenAI's new function, the Assistant Event Handler, and start streaming the output. Now, streaming text feature allows for real-time transmission of text between the user and the AI. And as you know, the OpenAI data processing is not always the fastest, but when you have a streaming capabilities, it opens up a whole new door of uh, communication with the end user because now the end user doesn't have to wait till the whole message is processed can get the responses as they come to them, almost like ChatGPT. And that's why UI is so important when you're developing chatbots. You wanna make sure the data and response are given out to the customer as they arrive. So that's why streaming is so important. Streamlit is commonly used to build web applications using ChatGPT. However, the constraints of Streamlit, which doesn't naturally support asynchronous updates in the way that WebSocket-based applications like WhatsApp, ChatGPT, or Slack would, 
we have to come up with a workaround so that we can simulate streaming by continually pulling OpenAI for responses and updating the Streamlit app with each new responses. This would be the same for any chat-based platforms that does not support asynchronous updates. To demonstrate this even further, I created a simple Streamlit web application that takes the user's input and sends it off to the OpenAI Assistant API. And uh, I also use the streaming code provided for WebSocket-based applications. And you'll notice the so limitations the here line when and it I'm returns running the, the Streamlit run application code to run the application in my local machine. And this instantly fires up the application. So let's say I write something, I ask a query, just like I did in Google Collaboratory, where it did support asynchronous updates. Notice that it only returned the first letter of the output, but in the command line, I have the whole message. To see this in slow motion, let's, let's try again. I run the call and notice it streams on my command line because the command line is a synchronous updated uh, application while in the streamlit ui it's still giving me the uh, first letter so what we're going to do now is uh, adapt the code so that it uh, takes chunks of the stream one at a time and outputs it into the streamlit application it would not be a true stream but it would be an adapted stream and uh, it works just as well and i'll show you um, the output in a little bit, but first let's go through the code. First off, make sure you already have an assistant created with your assistant ID uh, populated here, and then also put in your OpenAI API key. You have the SD title and SD.captions. SD is basically the Streamlit uh, package, uh, and then it provides the simple UI uh, to build rapidly. So uh, you can see the components here. The prompt would be enter your message where I'm storing the, the user's query into the prompt. And when user um, confirms the prompt, it runs the streaming process. I create a simple markdown border which, with SD markdown and then an empty box with SD.empty. This box would allow me to wrap all these stream outputs into a box uh, in a nicely formatted fashion. Notice I also create an empty list called report. And then we run the talked about create and run functions from the threads with the stream equals to true. And this would return the stream for us to process as chunks. If we go back to the create and run function documentation from OpenAI, you'll notice that the object has a bunch of events, run events, as it gets processed throughout the length of the run. So the the, the object that we're trying to find is the thread message dot delta and the contents of that object are going to be the uh, text message or the chunks uh, produced one at a time. So in simple words, it's looping through the events in the stream object. And if the event object is a thread dot message dot delta, it's going to go through the content and um, and see if it's a text message. And if it's a text message, it's gonna append the value, which would be the chunk in this case, uh, into the report. So the report's going to get one chunk at a time. Let's, let's take out the print command. This was for logging purposes. And then the result object is going to be the report with chunks appended one after the other cumulatively and then it's going to return that output in the uh, box. If you see the command line where I printed out the output from the create and run functions, you'll notice that I got one chunk at a time and uh, basically I used this code to process all these chunks into the report. Now it's time to see this bad boy in action. Now, if you found value in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell every time I drop value in this channel. Uh, make sure you join the free Discord community, the GPT Pioneers Club, uh, to network with like-minded people. Also, I'm releasing a new course, Python for GPT Builders, where I'm going to cover this in more detail, how you can uh, create ChatGPT Assistant, 
uh, create custom functions, enable streaming features, all using Python code. And if you want to deploy Streamlit applications like I've done here uh, for your front end, I'll show you how you can do that as well. So make sure you join the waitlist. See you on the next one.